Now I'm going to be tying uh, a Montana nymph. Now this is a blue Montana, meaning the throat instead of the traditional Montana being the yellow, uh, the thorax or the yellow chenille. I'm going to use a, a teal blue. I'll show you the one. This one here. Now this would be a good colour. This is a sea trout fly, and uh, you can either tie it with a hackle at the top or rubber legs, which was originally tied for. Uh, Argentina. So if you're going to Argentina, this is a good nymph pattern. Now, basically, especially for the sea trout, if you want to weight it, you could either have a bead on it, or you can put lead in the body. Now this is a lead tape that I have lead foil, sticky back, and I've just cut a length, 2 mil wide. I'm just going to build up the thorax with it. As I say, it's sticky. And all I'm going to do is wind down towards the eye, stop short of the eye, maybe a mil or two, Come back up, and this will give you a bit of weight to the fly. You could put a bit, you could put more on if you want, but at least to get the fly down. And then thread I'm going to be using. I'm just going to use a uni thread in black. Now when I tie it with the rubber legs, it's usually white, as uh, but you could use black or white, whatever you like. Now I've waxed the thread, so I'm going to start at the eye, and then I'm using the waist piece. Keeping it tight to control the turns of the thread as I wind down. And this stops helps stop it slipping and covers the lead foil as we work down. Once I've done that, then we can remove. So we just carry on down to the basically thread in line with the bar by the hook. The end of the shank, which is there. Well, it used to be I've actually flattened the barb, uh, so it's for catch release. I've got a hen hackle here, this is just a large hen. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have a wee slight mix of the fluff or the soft fibres at the bottom of the feather as well as some of the natural fibre itself kind of normal hen fibre. So I'm going to mix that up to both sides. So it's kind of got a tiny bit of movement. So we'll basically line them up, take out a couple of fibres there. You're looking for at least, it could be as long and short as you like. Uh, with, it's entirely, to keep the nymph type shape, you want it round about the, say, I would say the two thirds of body length over the back. And then we just catch this on top. And because it's quite soft, it'll slightly open, spread out. Now you could use marabou, you could use whatever you've got. Now what I'm going to do is just slightly cut this at an angle on top. We catch in, this is an old black chenille, meaning old style. It basically, we really wind it on a certain way, it's got the, the fibres have been woven in to the core, so that they lay back. Now that's where you want them to lay back normal, so that they're not against, not the opposite way. And then to tie it in, you just reveal the core. Catch this on. And then tight, we wind up, tying these in. Two thirds of the way up to about this point here. Then we start to wind up our body. Now, to make it last a wee tad longer, I'm going to wind this chenille over some. This is a uh, fine super glue. Just wipe it onto the shank. Not too much. And then we just work our way up with the chenille. Straight turn at the top, catch this in. Three or four turns down, and then basically trim away. I'm going to wax my thread again, and then tidy that. Now we're going back to our chenille. Now what I'm going to do here is actually, I'm going to tie it in basically going the opposite way I was originally tying it up. Now before I do that I'm going to just check the body. What I like to do with chenille is help form a shape. And you can do that, you can put a wee bit of taper on it by trimming towards the back like a help give you that nymph like shape. So a slight angle towards the back. On top here. So we've got a better taper. 
can take a bit more time on it on my side now you don't have to do this certainly helps with the profile of the fly and then we'll be quick look just a wee bit at the back here I need to do it as I say you don't have to do this this is just a personal thing if you want to do it now back to our chenille basically we're tying it in at the base we are holding it in our fingers it's so when we lay this over so we tie it on the top it's going to be a thorax cover this is how the original Montana would have been tied I'll just show you the reason for behind this is when you lay that on the top it naturally runs towards and runs the smooth way that's been woven onto the core you'll see it there it just makes it better better shape and it doesn't fall apart then make sure your threads right up against the body uh, for the thorax we're going to wind a black hackle through could be hen or cock this is a hen uh, peel away the fluff at the bottom catch this in just make sure this is secure throw away the excess stem I've just basically wound down and then I'm going to get on the way back up and tie in the dyed blue chenille this is a teal blue it's a lovely colour again I'm just removing some of the fibres that are there so you can see the, the core that makes it easier to tie in far stronger okay, wax on my thread my way back up towards the eye now you're looking probably only get maybe around three turns so there's one two come into our third turn let's come up just follow up with the thread make a space for the thread to come through into the chenille so if you 90 degree put a 90 degree bend into it it should allow it to slip into the core see so where we are come right in with the end the scissors right in trim that away just any excess and then we can tidy up now just wax your thread when you do that don't be shy of a head on the nymph it's a big fly and you need a good base of thread down you want to build your head to basically head up just to make sure that they've got a nice base of thread as I said to hold in your hackle which we're going to wind up first I'm just going to stroke the fibres back do a turn at the back and basically what we do is winding up through the chenille in between the chenille just do that again, it slipped out my fingers you could use the hackle pliers, it may be better to use them than this one but we'll just carry on since we've started it's getting a wee bit looking untidy but we can sort that out just draw back any fibre going forward wax on with thread just draw back in this case we just draw back the hackle fold it back so your fingers are out the way build from the head up as I say don't be shy with the head of this this nymph it's a good size uh, nymph so it is and then we can keep hold of the thread cut away or break off the point of the, the hackle then what we want to do is make a space, just any fibres on top just pull them down either side of the thorax we can bring more chenille over now you don't necessarily have to use the chenille, you could use whatever you have I mean uh, like floss or anything like that, make it a wee bit easier but this is what was originally used if you can see, that comes over the top you can make a space, I mean what I'm doing here is just use my nails just to pull back the fibre where I'm going to tie it in, but you have to be careful when you do this you catch it in and then practically straight away you can fold it back, but make sure it's sitting first before you do that just fold it back and then we can then wind up forming our head just taking your time 
try and keep the head as smooth as possible. Let's come in again with the scissors, come right in with the inside, just trim away, and then we can quite finish. Always keep the thread tight, nice and tight, and then we can quite finish. Yeah. I mean it looks as a, as a simple uh, nymph pattern, it's a very effective fly, it's very good in the river, it's very good in the locks as well, it's an old style fly, it's not win, I've not won any prizes for looks, but I've certainly won prizes for catching fish, and then looking a couple of coats of varnish and the head's finished, so just going to run in with the first coat, just, if you can retake your vice it makes it easier to to apply the varnish. Now this first coat will happen is it will soak in. The head will look a wee bit rough as it dries. The second coat will fill that up. And there we are. And that's your blue Montana. As I say you could put rubber legs in if you don't want the, the hackle through it. Rubber legs just basically tie two towards the back and two towards the front. And it works really well for the sea trout in Argentina as well as this one. Uh, it's a good dropper fly, um, so worth time. So I hope you enjoyed that, and that's your blue Montana. <laughs>